welcome to the All West of New York Radio Broadcast Network. This is OSR. Ready, so ready. Oh, okay. God. <laughs> We're talking about Justin Bieber's monkey, right? And now these were hosts, Noah and Koki. Nobody has that one, like, first really <laughs> horrible experience with alcohol. And I have two. Think so, Joe. I just have a flag on purpose. The no, only reason I got okay. hired on this show is because I went to school for this shit. And I dropped out after, like, a semester. And George. The golden microphone to match the golden voice. <laughs> Your eyeball. Some DMT in your fucking eyes and live life, people. Eat it. Uh, take care of business, uh, man. Look at the bunny. Look at the bunny. I got a text that uh, says no use stream. Uh, we are looking into that. Ladies and gentlemen, nothing I say in the show is real. Please, yes. please remember that. Uh, although, although everything I say, except for that Jew comment I made earlier, is real. That bitch, Katy Perry, can suck skin off my dick. I'll smack the shit out of her. You waterboard them if they don't talk. Damn. Waterboard them with high C. Oh, Son of a fudge. I'm okay! I'm okay! <laughs> The alcohol that he's already drank has made him slower. Noah is a drunk. That bitch is annoying. God damn it. You know, there was four of us last week, and now there's three of us. That's what we cut off a tile. <laughs> so we cut off a middle finger, apparently. <laughs> yeah. Now, button, button, who's got the button? Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Noah's Ark Show. Noah Goki here, live on the All Western New York Radio Broadcast Network. As always, each and every Wednesday, roughly six-ish. It is roughly six-ish again there, Joe, right? Somewhere around there. Can you hear me? There I am. Hey, yes, there I am. You're alive. Somewhere around six-ish. Roughly and, uh, six-ish. And I, I realize today that you're wearing Buffalo Bills gear, probably from head to toe. I... It's totally by accident, but the season is upon us. I mean, and, I and, it, and, it, and it occurs to me that yes, the season is upon us, which yeah. means football bets. Football bets. That's uh, right. We have to do that this week, don't we? We do. Oh, good lord! I forgot We're, about those entirely. We'll pick for George. Since oh yeah, he can't definitely. be bothered to show up. We'll definitely pick. We'll we'll let Chucky pick for George. There you go. That works. We have a special guest in studio tonight, Chucky Campbell. Hey, Chucky, how's it going? What's up, Buffalo? What's up, Western New York Radio? Let's go. That's right. We're live. Give us a call anytime during the show, 716-402-4218. That's our phone number. You could call with your questions for Chucky. We're going to be talking all things Chucky tonight. Fresh off of your uh, your victory at the All-Western New York Music Awards. Yeah, that was wonderful. That was, uh, that was big for me because I haven't been well-known in the scene, you know, kind of trying to establish myself over the last year. And Chucky just won Best New Artist and Best Rapper slash Hip Hop Performer in Western New York. The All Western New York and performance. And a performance at the ceremony, which was which was great. Yeah, we had uh, uh Tamika Sweet uh playing uh hip hop violin for the us. Violin, day. yeah. Yeah. Now, usually we have a drummer with us as well. Uh we're still working on uh getting those performances rounded out exactly the way we want it though. So You don't see that every day. A hip hop performance with great energy, you know, and 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 a uh, great flow. Just you know, Chucky's killing it. But there's there's Tamika, on the violin, and it was great. I mean, she was she was right along with it, man. Absolutely, she does a great job. I met her through uh, Four Quarters. Uh, they do art, education, and culture, and we were both kind of, um, I guess, applying for the same position, so to speak, to have a show in uh, uh, their performance slot. And that's how I met Tamika, and she did wonderful that night. We kind of uh, hooked up and got everything working for the music, you know. Chucky Campbell is an American musician, poet, fiction writer, editor, publisher, and educator living in Buffalo, New York. His most recent album, More Die of Heartbreak, has garnered five-star reviews and positive press from online and print outlets such as the Huffington Post, The Examiner, and the UTG Review. Yeah, we've been very lucky with this uh, release, you know, to get reviewed by the uh, publications that we have. Um, so, you know, we're still trying to kind of breathe new air into this uh, this record too, uh, while we're working on the new EP. 
Now, tell me a little bit about your background, because you're originally from Kentucky, right? Absolutely. I was uh, born and raised in uh, Richmond, Kentucky, which is about 20 miles outside of Lexington, and it's about an hour from Louisville. Okay. Um, so we're kind of in northern central Kentucky. Um, and then what brought you to uh, western New York? That's a long story, actually. You know, We um, like long stories on this <laughs> show. That's my favorite thing. You know, um, so, uh, you know, I kind of grew up... You know, in a very humble atmosphere in Kentucky, you know, we um, weren't, uh, we definitely weren't upper or middle class, you know, so, um, and I wasn't a very academic, scholarly guy at that time, you know, um, you know, I went to a high school where they, you know, they wanted you for weapons on the way in, um, but I was, I was a basketball player, and so I ended up getting the basketball scholarship to play college ball in Tennessee. Um, I played four years of college basketball at the university. After I was done with that, I played about uh, three months of professional basketball um, in Venezuela and Caracas, right around the time when Chavez was um, coming into power, which was a very kind of turbulent time where people were throwing like Molotov cocktails. At shit. Wow. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, crazy. Um, then after that, I moved to Nashville for a little bit. I kind of hurt my knee, and basketball was somewhat over for me. Um, and I was really focusing on the music at that time. Um, you know, that was a, a very like musical time for me. We were starting to make an album. I was with the guy that produced this record, Willie Breeding, mm -hmm. out of Nashville, Tennessee. He's a, uh, you know, an alt country uh, artist who also works with his sister. Uh, they work in a band called The Breedings. They do a lot of great music. Um, but that kind of all fell apart when. Um, my jaw was broken, and I have uh, like two metal plates in my face, and so I, I didn't do music again for like seven years after that. Wow. And I started to uh, focus on education. Um, I went to Eastern Kentucky University and got my master's, and then I followed up and got my Ph.D. at the University of Southern Mississippi. <laughs> um, and huh. I was contacted by Bryan and Stratton College after I got my Ph.D., and that's how I ended up in Buffalo, New York. Long twisted labyrinthine story, <laughs> wow. you know, of craziness. So, here I am. Very cool. <laughs> Very cool background. I mean, that's that's wild story, man. So now you're still doing that. You're still uh, still teaching and. Absolutely. I um I teach everything from communication literacy, information literacy, to uh, public speaking, to remedial English at Brian Stratton College. Also adjunct at Canisius College. Um. So, no, I really love my job. I work with probably, you know, the best students a teacher could ask for. Chucky, you're a true renaissance man <laughs> of the day. Rapper, poet, educator. Very cool, man. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. The new album uh, is, is awesome, and, you know, just the artwork alone, you can tell that you really put uh, put your heart and soul into this. The artwork's amazing. This is not a show to the camera here. Mm -hmm. This is not just like a, like a CD. This is like a book, a three-page book with a huge insert in here. We've got all kinds of stuff. Tell me about this, Chucky. Yeah, the packaging was like very important to us. We spent so much time on the record. Very that, unique. Um, very unique packaging there. Yeah, we didn't want to hand somebody something that uh, didn't kind of represent all the work we put into the music. You know, we have musicians from everywhere. Uh, this is a very kind of... Um, biographical work for me you know it tells a story and narrative throughout it's not your normal hip-hop album um, so it kind of you know you start at several different places of my life and each song kind of describes a different kind of heartbreak that has happened you know throughout the story uh, the artwork itself was done by Kirby Rosanes he's out of the Philippines he's an amazing artist um, he has almost a million followers on Facebook if you guys want to look him up um, you know he does doodle art illustrations uh, you can just really type it into the search box and it'll pop up. And you know he does this amazing stuff. He works for Nike and and Ford and all of these different huge companies, which makes it even more surprising that he would work with me, just an independent artist on a very small project like this. But it was what it's like an eight-panel DVD case with a yeah. huge poster insert. So yeah. <laughs> So talk me through the uh, the process first of uh, of making the album, and then also the the biographical kind of content behind it. 
Uh, the background of the album is based off a personal experience that I had with one of my mentors that got me uh, kind of introduced to hip hop. Hip hop was like my introduction to the world of ideas. It was what made me want to study Shakespeare and Poe and like read read literature for the first time because I wanted to be that rapper that could bring and carry in these kind of poetic, you know, verses into my into my rhymes and flows and. Um, you know, I was lucky enough to come in contact with a person that was kind of on that level with me. His name was Ralph Prater, and we used to perform together. We had a group together um, that went by the name of the Congregation, um, and even one of the songs that begins the album, Speak, the second verse is actually Ralph's verse that he wrote, um, and so I performed that. Um, now, Ralph wasn't just my best friend. You know, when I mentioned before that my jaw got broken, it was actually... Ralph that did that so it's a long twisted story um, uh, me and Ralph were, were best were, were best friends but he had a couple of things a couple of issues in his life you know he never really had the same kind of foundation and support that he needed to really do things that he really wanted to do with his life but he was probably one of the smartest people I ever met in my life um, he was always very encouraging and helpful toward me but he had a chemical imbalance also so there would be these times where um, life would become overwhelming to him and there was nowhere for that anger and aggression to go. And, you know, I would see these moments, but I had never really targeted for myself that they might actually happen to me one day. Um, and so, you know, I would see, like, Ralph, for instance, beat up his uncle, right? <laughs> That's, you know, um, 15, 20 years older than him. I would see, like, um, you know, Ralph get in fights at school. I remember he picked a guy up one time and basically suplexed him into the bleachers and tried to push his head in with the bleachers, you know, um, that was not highly regarded for the school, <laughs> you know, like, uh, they, they didn't they, like yeah, that. They get um, upset about that kind of thing. You know, but, um, you know, when you're some, when you're close to someone, it kind of puts up this kind of uh, wall for you. You can't really see right. that you might also be in danger as well. So the night, like, he flipped out, like, no one expected it to happen. You know, and, um, you know, I didn't fight back because I didn't really know what to do when it happened. You know, like, he, I just kind of got attacked. He assaulted me. Um, I had recently had my wisdom teeth taken out, so it weakened my jaw. So when he hit me with the first blow, my whole jaw slid to one side, and it, it broke um, the first part of my jaw. But then the other side, it just kind of it slid the jaw into, the, into it completely collapsed and broke apart. So oh. one, one side of my jaw is just a complete metal plate and the other one has like a stabilizing plate that sits like right inside of my mouth so um and yeah I didn't wow, rap for man. seven years Damn. after that yeah <laughs> um Damn. you know and it was it was really weird because me and him uh we didn't talk for probably about six of those seven years when I was right. in my PhD I, I gave him a call one night I, I got really drunk for some reason I went out to celebrate I think I got published or something I went out and I, I drank a lot and that night, and for some reason, he was still in my mind. It was like 6 in the morning, and the sun was coming up or something, and um, I got lucky and called his old number where his mom used to live, and um, he was there for no reason he should be, you know? <laughs> and uh, we spoke for like an hour and a half. That was the last time I spoke to him. He committed suicide the next year in March, um, and... That's why the album is dedicated to them. Wow. Yeah, so yeah, I know it's a it's a crazy story. It is absolutely, man. So much into it. It's really cool, though. It's really yeah. great that you could, um, you know, at least memorialize them this way with the album. Wow. Yeah, if you look at my SoundCloud, there's still some of the old stuff that we did together in um, 1999 under the congregation like you can find some of the very old stuff it's not really? great sound quality but you can kind of hear what he sounded like he's yeah an amazing rapper amazing so I mean there's everything in your background is uh, as, as you know kind of broad based as it is and and with all this this heartache in it of course it's all uh, definitely influenced you you know it has it has an impact on your uh, on your hip-hop career right Absolutely. You know, in many ways, it, uh, I was going to mention MC Lars, who we've talked to before, because it sort of reminds yep. me of uh, of him in many ways. I know Joe's a big fan, 
you were thinking the same thing, Joe? Uh, as, as he's mentioned his friend who committed suicide, and I'm thinking of the song 23 by MC Lars, which is about his friend who committed suicide. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but very similar uh, styles anyway, mm-hmm. and a similar kind of, um, I don't know, ilk. Yeah. Hip-hop with uh, some serious substance to it, which is which is great. Yeah, I think that's important um, right now, especially in hip-hop. It seems like we're at the place where the genre itself is becoming more diluted and commercialized. Yes. And so um, and it's hard for people that weren't born immediately in the time where hip-hop had a lot of substance to know that it has the potential to have substance. So even today, kids kind of come into a world where they're learning about hip-hop the only side they get is maybe the dance music side or the crunk side or the turn up side. They don't get the side where there's, um, you know, strong storylines. Right. Uh, right. Human emotion and cathartic release. Yes, absolutely. And that's really the the heart of it. You know, that's the heart and soul of of the genre, and of so much music. And of course, it, you know, they always come in and, and kind of take it and exploit it, over commercialize it, and ruin it. Yeah, for everyone. It happens to every genre. It does. <laughs> it's, it's a terrible, terrible thing that happened to art. Yeah, yeah. And unfortunately, it was just hip-hop's turn. Yeah. Because it got so popular. Uh, but we have you, and you are keeping it up, doing the right thing. Let's check out the album. What do you say? Yeah, let's do it. Got it here. Where should we begin, my friend? Right at the beginning? Um, yeah, you can begin with that one if you'd like. This is Speak. Um, it's uh, The second verse is written by Ralph Prater, and the, the chorus is co-written uh, with me and Ralph. We used to trade back and forth with this one. Um, Chucky Campbell, all Western New York Radio. Dot com. Wherever you are out there right now, I'm glad you made it here. I kneel to the earth, to clutch a fistful of sand. In my palm, I see patterns forming words in my hand. Born to understand and comprehend what my diction is the sin and channel through the enamel that unravels my travel. Because along the strobe and halogen bumps, I walk forever shunned, they're up the rare and untouched. But chance I was sucked into a universe that held me too much, but not enough. Drunk by superstition and ignoring intervention, your visions often tempting but following. Instruction is your function, it caters your deduction to a shunned outcome. And if these words are my last words, and you fell to reply No, this is not where evil live But where humanity died Your world is lying Been a liar Lying to life Living the lie Supply of mankind With wrong and right A plight that must suffice As I blitz into the night Seeing God's face in me Blotches his vices Into my glide It's the hardest lens of here Vincent Van Gogh Let this man go And so it be Brilliantly fused When my pain becomes a roam Ripping me inside out You often call that rap word up No doubt With your wax people With wax thoughts And the wax world Drifting into space What a Waste. It is only on these rainy days that I could only wish for sun rays To make all of my wax problems just melt away So speak, without losing control of tongue and cheek Though my heart is hell and hell is used to harp a week Weak, weak is the result of many lies That they use to program dreams under the retina of your eyes Why, why would you believe my one is sign? Being brainwashed is not the way to healthy minds So speak, without losing control of tongue and cheek Though my heart is hell and hell is used to harp a week Weak Weak is the result of many lies that they use to program dreams under the retina of your eyes. Why? Why won't you believe my one is sign? Being brainwashed is not the way to healthy minds. Invention, concrete evidence of comprehension, illustrating optimal potential of a nation. Lifelines were used to procreate and gather food, but often separated by the lesser minds of fools. And everything a new discovery should probably teach us is often desecrated by the interfering leeches. Filter out uniqueness, individuals are dangerous to any virus that's supposed to be contagious. The talking market ages, the young and the impression barricade the lie and vaccinate contamination. I hope this message sinks in. I only have a pen and every attribute of any healthy human being. Yeah, I can help you reach it, but only if you see it. I can grab your flesh and hold my music, grab your spirit and pervious the lyrics made to live beyond. Even after songs are done, kaleidoscopes of hope, scriptures of elixirs, applied to hollow moves with means of pains and mental pictures. Oh, yeah. 
So speak without losing control with tongue in cheek. Dog, my heart best hell and hell is used to harbor weak. Weak, weak is the result of many lies that they use to program dreams on the retina of your eyes. Why, why would you believe my one is fine? Being brainwashed is not the way to healthy mind. So speak without losing control with tongue in cheek. Dog, my heart best hell and hell is used to harbor weak. Weak, weak is the result of many lies that they use to program dreams on the retina of your eyes. Why, why would you believe? My one is sign being brainwashed is not the way to healthy minds. This is my life. This is my story. This is where more would die of heartbreak. I've been drinking brown like a mind spinning since the sun went down. I can feel it in the air of the city. Singing to me gently the pressures of the day. I love couldn't see it my way, okay? Her sadness feels like rubber skin. Makeup, lipstick, summer trends like plastic shells of mannequins. She's pale and thin as porcelain. With black stone eyes of lifeless dolls. Her hair is frayed like balls of yarn. Her frail and useless, mindless arms. Motion as if not in charge. Stream like puppets owned by gods. And sure if men should own their minds. Because this life as it was sometimes. Times, no pills to trade the lows for high Inside a tangled soul and winds with nothing real behind her eyes. There's nothing real behind her eyes. There's nothing real behind her eyes. There's nothing real behind her eyes. When a mother visits, she cannot cry. But deep within, she wants to die. Deep within, she wants to die. Deep within, she wants to die. So deep within, she wants to die. Deep within, she wants to die. Imagine the emptiness. Some things we can't come back from, but what if we could? To say goodbye year after year, almost nothing reverse the tears. But imagine brief, a winding gear, pulling back where nothing's real. Rewinding life like movie film, a ghost beneath its lifting limbs. Free from strings, untied by will, out her mouth fly fluorescent pills. Land in palms, return to rims of plastic bottles, prescriptions filled. Xanax, Valium, Vicodin, her blackened eyes find life again. Hair grows bright in flowing wind, the plastic shell of a mannequin. Now tender flesh, still transient. Damage veins from heroin Go purple, pink, and heal her skin An apartment filled with clueless kids Watch backward words from moving lips Reverse the sounds that once convinced The minds and hearts and mother scars Where wounds once healed by magic wands A bar they call like satin songs She ignores them all, back pedals halls A room of steep and darkened stairs That appear to lead her to nowhere I merge atop a building roof And out into the summer air I'm drunk and hurt and consume myself The words I say are deeply felt before they escape my angry breath, I reverse the steps. She comes to me, an index finger in my chest, pulls it back and kisses me. Turns around and faces out where the sun once down now rises up. Did she tell me time was up? Before I knew my time was up, I'm still on top that building drunk, staring out at the setting sun. We're still on top that building drunk, staring out at the setting sun. Oh.